Damien Marley is so is so great to meet you. It's such an honor for me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. It was a great show. It's not your first time here, so how did you enjoy it? It was a great time. It's not my first time here, but I do believe it's the first headline show I've ever done here. So most of the time I've been here in the past has been on festivals. So this was great to see, you know, a concentrated gathering of my fans. Like a lot of this, a lot of the songs they were singing on, along to, I didn't expect that. Even some of the newer ones, you know what I mean. So this was, this was very a, a really cool surprise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, last month, exactly on July 21st, it was the fifth anniversary of your last album, Stony Hill. Uh, so uh, amazing Grammy Grammy Award winning album. So how do you look back on it from the times perspective? Wow, I mean. You know, the last few years has been so crazy that even when you said to me that it's, it's five years, it doesn't seem like five years because it almost seemed like the last three years didn't happen. <laughs> the last three years just seemed like, you know, like one blur. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? So even hearing you say that is surprising. So I, I've, to tell you the truth, I haven't spent much time really even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just been dealing with life day to day as it comes. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. Stony Hill is a neighborhood in Kingston, Jamaica, where you grew up. Yeah. Uh, so how did that place shape you and what are your favorite memories from go from growing up there? Wow, well that place shaped me in a whole heap ways. I mean, you know, as you know, your childhood shapes you. You know, your childhood is a great deal to be, you know, to do with the person that you become as an adult. And that's where I spent most of my childhood was in Stony Hill. I had a very great upbringing, um, you know, big up to my mom, big up to my stepfather, Tom. You know, they made sure that I had, you know, a stable environment. I was loved, I was cared for, I was nurtured, a good education, so forth. So some of my favorite memories is really playing in the yard with friends and family, with my little brother, my little sister, my cousins, and just doing mischievous things in, in the yard as a kid. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. And one of my favorite songs from this album, and also one of my favorite videos, is Living It Up, which has so much positive, fun energy and yeah. just a celebration vibe. Yeah. So what was your favorite part of, of doing this whole song and shooting the video? My favorite part of that was to be able to take my son to see where I come from. And not just where I come from personally, but where the root of his family comes from. You know, him get for see trench town, him get for see, you know, him get for see what make us who we are, you know, and get that real experience. That was great for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And during the show today, you also played uh, a lot of uh, songs from, from your dad. Uh, how important for you is it to, to keep, uh, you know, covering those songs and, and, and put your own spin on it? Uh, look, I mean, look, if you ask me in an interview, I can come up with a million things to say about why it's important. I do it because I love it. And I'm sure that's why my brothers and sisters do it too. It's because they really, we enjoy our father's music. And it's ours also to play. So why not play, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And your style is very unique because it blends uh, reggae with, with kind of a raga flow and some hip hop. Uh, and it's different from what Ziggy, Stefan or Julian do. It, it kind of stands out and uh, it, it has its own unique vibe. Mm -hmm. So how did you come up with that style and how did you develop it? I think that has a lot to do with my age. So when I was growing up, you know, dance style music was the music I was listening to. You know what I mean? Where I think that my older brothers and sisters perhaps were maybe influenced by the generation before a little bit more than the generation I was influenced by. So I think that I've mostly to do with my age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, actually my introduction to your music as far as listening to a whole album was Distant Relatives because I grew up listening to hip hop and then uh, the album with Nas dropped in 2010. Right. Um, but it started in 2005 with Road to Zion. Uh, so how, how do you look back on this whole experience of working with Nas on a full project? Was it a big challenge for you? Well, the album didn't really start in 2005. Just in 2005 is where I first met Nas and yeah. started to build mm -hmm. a relationship. Yeah, okay. And then, I mean, it, everything, it wasn't planned. Nothing was really planned. My manager, Dan, suggested the idea of doing an EP with Nas about Africa. And we were enjoying it so much that we decided to make it an album. But that wasn't really the plan going in. Mm -hmm. So nature took its course, you know? Okay, and uh, also one 
another big hip hop collab, collab that you've done uh, is with Jay-Z BAM on the 444 album mm -hmm. and you also had a chance to uh, show Jay-Z around uh, Jamaica you shot a video a short documentary yeah. um, how do you remember that whole uh, experience it was cool um, you know Jay, he, he called me personally so one day I get a text saying it's, it's Jay and he wants to speak so I call him back and he said you know he has a song he wants me to be a part of so he flew me out to LA. No, lie. I was going to LA anyway to do something else, which is where he was. So when I got out to LA, we ended up hooking up in the studio. And then for the video, I was on tour. So I was actually in Ethiopia. I was in Ethiopia and he had sent a, a plane for me to go back to Jamaica so that we could do the documentary that you see us doing there mm -hmm. in Jamaica. So that's what I really remember about it the most because I mean, it's not often someone sends for you from such, such a far place just to do, you know, a few hours of filming. So it was cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And going back to the very beginnings, a lot of your early music was produced or co-produced co by Stephen. And um, you have amazing uh, musical chemistry uh, and you, you've worked with him on a lot of records. So yeah. what, what is it about Stephen that uh, kind of uh, brings that vibe out of you? And, and have you ever thought of making a duo album with him? Oh yeah, we talk about that all the time to make a duo album together. Where really it is, you know, is, is my bigger brother. And that relationship that we've had over the years as bigger brother and younger brother play a part in us making music. So the chemistry is not just a musical chemistry, it's a life chemistry mm -hmm. of us being brothers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, outside of those collabs that I've mentioned, you've also worked with uh, some great hip hop artists like uh, Eve, Snoop Dogg, Method Man, Lupe Fiasco. So do you have any collab that stands out to you uh, for some reason? Well, I mean, for obvious reasons, Nas, because we did a whole album together, yeah. so that obviously stand up yeah. above you know everything else. Yeah, you know, yeah. All right, and um, it's been over 25 years from your debut album, Mr. Marley. Uh, so, how would you say? How do you look at your legacy right now? And uh, what would you say is your biggest musical accomplishment? My biggest musical accomplishments, I believe, is yet to come. It might not even be in the way of an album. It might be something else. Um, what I can say is that if you look at the growth of my career, especially for young artists and young people, you can see that persistence and practice, it, it, it benefits you. You know what I mean? Because you can hear the growth. Mm -hmm. And that, that growth is not by mistake. That growth is by spending very, you know, a lot of nights in the studio practicing, a lot of nights rehearsing, a lot, you know, trying to better my craft. You know what I'm saying? So that applies to, you know, that would be what I would even want, like I said again, young musicians to be able to listen to my body of work and hear the growth throughout the albums and realize, okay, keep working at it. Mm. You know? Okay, and yeah. um, so uh, I think we have to wrap up slowly. So, uh, what would you say? What are your plans for the future? And do you have any last words for your fans in Poland and fans all over the world? Well, um, the plans for the future is really to make some more music um, to the fans in Poland. I want to say, well, thank you for having us here this evening. Um, you know, take care of yourselves. You know, what I mean, in this time, it's been a while since we've been on the road. To see you know everyone here and healthy and enjoying themselves was a good vibes, and please continue to take care of yourself. You know. Okay, thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Right, it was an honor. Respect. Thank you so much. Respect. <laughs>